Hi everybody, Eddie Vegas here. Welcome back for part three of my quick and dirty tutorial for new players on how to get off to a decent start playing Distant Worlds Universe in a pre-warp configuration. If you followed parts one and two, you know that we have already built we have just got done building our spaceport and we're ready to start designing and building ships. So let's go ahead because we're going to want an exploration ship. So let's go ahead and open the design screen and we're going to take the exploration ship and we're going to edit it because we have not made one yet. If you make one, you cannot edit. You need to go copy as new. But we haven't made one yet, so we'll go ahead and go edit. All right, now we'll quickly, just a little aside about this screen. I'll tell you what, I really hate this screen. It's so, it gets the job done, but my God, it's it's such a mess. These icons are too small. The, the text is unreadable. Um, the, there's no drag and drop. Uh, it's, 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 it gets the job done and you definitely get all the information that you need. Uh, we'll give it that. But it's really a poor screen, and let's hope for Distant Worlds 2 that they, my God, please do something about it. All right. We're going to design a scout ship as soon as the galaxy gets saved. The first thing you're going to want to do, and this is really important for new players, only retrofit when manually ordered. Absolutely important, because if you don't do that, the computer will redesign your ship, and we do not want that. All right. Since we're in pre-warp, all we have is thruster engines, and so that's what we're going to do is we're going to add some extra thruster engines onto it, the ion thruster. Let's go ahead and add a couple more. Uh, let's, okay, now this is where I a little bit differ with some of the other tutorials I've seen. I like to keep the hab modules and life supports at a minimum. We've got a basic space reactor. We've got excess energy output at 39. Uh, cruise is at 20 and sprint is at 39. That's really good. Okay, so we can sprint away at full power. I like the concept. He has three directional thrusters, a resource profile sensor, and five small fuel cells. His range is 212% of the system diameter. Okay, so we can go back and forth from the farthest to the nearest, which pretty much suits me. That's okay. I could add like a few more, but once again, I like to go cheap here. Uh, we're going to name this guy uh, Snoopy. And we're going to just make sure that everything is the way you want it. Uh, I think I believe that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now we're going to build two ships we're going to build. Uh, one exploration ship and we're going to build one construction ship. So let's go ahead and purchase. Here, this is really important to pay attention to, is that here is our, our available money and cash flow, but mainly the main thing is cash flow here, 3000 whatever, and this is going to cost me 1333 in maintenance. You always want to be paying attention to this to make sure you don't go into debt, or if you do go into debt, you, have, you know what you're going to be wanting to do to get out of it. Let's go ahead and purchase those ships. And there's this little triangle thing here, which uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the diamond thing, which indicates a uh, exploration ship. And the big square indicates a construction ship. Uh, let's go ahead and unpause it. And we'll run it. We're still waiting for things to kind of shake out. And what I'd like to do is just sort of wait until... All the uh, research centers get built. And uh, once the research centers get built, then we're going to see just about what our cash flow is. Uh, once again, I'd like to reduce the taxes a little bit, but we definitely do need some income. Here's the uh, computer spamming me the dem demand for new ships. And the exploration ship seeker has already been completed at Cap Spaceport. So now I'm going to click on them. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure, uh-huh, okay, so his uh, radar 
has already discovered what remember on in part two we looked at this and it said resources unknown but now we have some information this is kind of a crappy planet to tell you the truth there's not very much steel there's not very much lead and there's not very much gold but we are going to build a, eventually we're going to build a mining station there just to get things sort of kick-started we don't really i mean this like i say this is kind of a crappy planet but let's go ahead since we're a fledgling economy we're going to go ahead and build it and get some input we'll get some steel coming in get some lead coming in get some gold coming in that's uh, really important this guy here the seeker is going to go and explore this planet we have encountered a new empire in the eddy prime system the fierce fang invaders this is not good so we already have some pirates uh, what happened to them where are they hmm i don't see them anywhere Uh, do, 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 do. This is kind of bad, to tell you the truth, because uh, the pirates, I think what we need to do is what I would suggest is go ahead and open up the diplomacy screen and take a look and see how powerful these guys are. Uh, military ships, 11. We have zero. And what I suggest is go ahead and speak with them. And let's request a protection arrangement. 71 credits a month it's really cheap this way we're tranquil you know we're tranquil we can uh pay that uh, protection they won't attack us and this will give us some chance to get a leg up and be able to kick them out eventually so we accept your protection all right goodbye actually funnily enough paying their protection arrangement will make them like us which is okay so we have already told our exploration ship to go here so let's go ahead and unpause it oh there he is there's our new guy the base high-tech lab one has been completed at cap let me just see if there's anybody else that needs to be built uh it's probably the easiest way to see is here in the research stations we've got energy lab high-tech lab uh we're still waiting for weapons lab to get built and then we'll be able to see our cash flow and especially now that we're paying 71 credits a month remember now this, there's 12 months in a year so basically we're paying about a uh, close to 1k in uh in uh in protection fees to the pirates also notice that the computer has already built some uh state owned or privately owned uh vessels these guys are going to be going doing mining this guy's a mining ship and this guy's a gas mining ship and these guys are going to go out and do their own thing without your intervention they're going to go out and try to get stuff and bring it back to the port to make sure that uh, to make sure that uh, we've got enough stuff for everybody, uh, let's go ahead and see where is our guy. He's there. Okay, let's go ahead and send him there. Uh, the base weapons lab has been finished, and we have completed research and energy collection. Here's an interesting thing: offer smuggling mission. We will go ahead and take this. Basically, what this is, is we will pay independent contractors to bring us stuff that we need. We pay a bonus of 100 credits for every 100 units of cargo that reaches cap. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but since we really need, basically, we, we're going to need, like, lots of everything. And so I'm going to go ahead and approve it. And I'm going to ignore the advisor who keeps telling me to build ships. And let's go ahead and run it. Retrofit ships and bases with the energy collector. We definitely want to do this, though. Uh, this thing, basically, the cost of retrofitting all our state-owned ships and bases. The main thing we're worried about is the bases. We definitely want to equip our bases with energy collectors. That way they don't use gas unnecessarily. 
And because gas is at a premium for the moment until we are able to get a source of Caslon, which is the gas that is the fuel that's used for your ships at the very beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and approve it. And now my, basically my economy should be pretty much stabilized. Let's go ahead and take a look at the research. And yes, we've got all our three little thingies here. Total research capacity is 270 and actual output is 193. We have plenty of capacity to take care of it for the foreseeable future. So we are functioning at full capacity in terms of our research ability. That's good. We'll go ahead and let this guy keep on cruising and let him discover what it is that's over there. Uh, have we made our construction ship? Yes, we have indeed made our construction all right, so the constructor part, the constructor is still building. Let's let them go ahead and build. And we have completed research in transport systems. Uh, we have a standard troop compartment, and now we have passenger ships. Here comes our guy. He's going to be discovering this thing here pretty soon. And in the ruins of the Grand Retreat, we have found valuable treasure worth 9446 credits. That's good. And this guy is done. Uh, hold on. All right, so Exploration Ship Seeker has completed its mission. Now the next thing is to go here and explore this planet. The most important thing. Let's just get this thing out of the way. And this way we're cool. We'll be able to beeline towards the hyperdrive. And uh, it will be good. All right. And also it did say the construction ship constructor 001 has been completed. And now theoretically we should be able to right click on this thing. Build at Moon R says a mining station. Like I say this is a crappy planet but let's go ahead and get it happening. The constructor will pick up all the materials needed. I suppose I should comp I should explain too that uh, your initial planet starts with a good supply but not an infinite supply of a lot of good stuff. Uh, meanwhile the retrofitting for the base cap spaceport is good. Uh, we have another guy asking us to retrofit with a standard troop compartment yes we basically want that yes and it's only going to cost us 454 so we'll go ahead and do it we approve and uh let's see where our exploration ship is it should be looking pretty good at this point here uh, we have 30,000. We have cash flow of 1,179. I'm going to kind of take a look in here and reduce taxes a little bit to 20%. And we're going to be running a little bit of deficit spending, but at the same time, we're going to try to get our growth happening. We also have the inhabitants of Capper happy with you. Reducing the taxes are going to make them even more happy. This is good. And we'll run a little bit of deficit spending here for a little while. Let's go ahead and unpause it. And yes, you can see now the cash flow is minus 1,267, but that's okay. We have a little bit of money ahead. And the retrofitting, these are all the, uh, the uh, base stuff that we have. And it's all basically the, um, the, uh, the base stuff that we have, like basically the medium spaceport and all the research centers. We have another prompt to install Corvid and shields. And of course, we don't care about military ships because we haven't built any and we really don't care about our exploration ship. But we do care about our bases, which could benefit from, from some shields. My God, I can't speak today. So we're going to approve it. And let's go ahead and keep on cranking out. And the research is continuing, which is good. You definitely want to be keeping an eye on this stuff here. A lot of times when you're doing your own research, you definitely want to hit pause when something new gets researched. 
Uh, hold on a second. Fierce Fang Invaders Pirates offer colony location. And they want to ask me where to establish my next colony, but I'm unable to, so I'm not paying. It's okay. I can't colonize anything. So I don't really care. And we have completed research in cruise systems. Remember I was talking about that in part two. Now we'll be able to, once we get bigger ship sizes of 230, we'll be able to just slap three HAB modules and life supports and we'll be able to cover the entire size. Of, we'll be able to build a ship that's a 230 <clears throat> with only using three uh, HAB modules and life supports. Okay, that's cool. We also have a little line here indicating that we need a new high-tech project. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got. Uh, personally, I really like to get happiness things happening. And these guys are 120K, 120K. So let's go ahead and we'll take this guy and this guy. And these are going to result in upgrades to our base, putting medical systems and entertainment systems, which is going to make our people happier. Let's just go ahead and go that route right now. That way we can raise taxes and people will still be reasonably happy. We're still running a deficit, but that's okay. We're gonna try, we're going for kind of a boost. We're going for kind of a boost. And construction ship constructor 001 has completed its mission. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, do not have any other planets explored. I could have done that by making a second exploration ship. But I really worry about, well, let's just go ahead and tell the constructor, because it's pretty close. He'll probably get back in time. Let's go ahead and tell the constructor to build at Planet Maruby. Even though we don't really know what it's got, let's go ahead and tell him to build a mining station. And uh, this was going to take the guy forever, but whatever, we don't care. And here comes our exploration ship. He's getting there, he's getting there, he's getting there. And here we go. In the ruins of the retreat of Marubi, we have found a store of scientific knowledge. This will allow us to begin warp field precursors. Okay, so we close. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this guy on automate and I'll just let him find the planets that he needs to find by himself. I know he's way far away from everything that I would normally build at, especially since I don't have, uh, I don't have, uh, speedy travel, but that's okay. Let him discover. I'm really not worried about it at this point here. Uh, we also have completed research in armor plating. So let's go ahead and go back to weapons. I think what I'm going to do is research enhanced missiles as well. This gives me some long distance guys. Range 520. Damage lost zero per 100 distance. So it basically it has a warhead on it so it doesn't lose any damage. Uh, and it's a long range thing which is good. So now basically we have what the basis of a military fleet is about. We have shields, we have armor, we have close range weapons. Wait, sorry, close range, close range weapons, railgun weapon, weaponry. And once we get this done, we're going to have enhanced missiles. We have long range weaponry. So we can begin to set up a kind of fleet where we make really strongly shielded ships, which have close range weapons and perhaps less shielded and protected ships with long range weapons a front line and a back line and artillery and let's go ahead and go with rapid fire projectiles so we can improve our rail guns even more let's go that route all right i'm satisfied our population has been growing and so our cash flow is no longer as bad as it was. 
Let's go ahead with the reduced taxes and take a look and see how happy people are. They are very happy and growth rate is 6.4%. Before it was 3 point something. So we're looking good. Our population is uh, 2,802 million. That's good. <clears throat> and people are really, 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 really happy. So let's go ahead and keep this tax rate low for the moment. We also have a warning to retrofit our ships and bases and we will approve that that's going to put armor on our bases we definitely like that and we've set this guy to automate and uh, that should do it for part three i'm happy with that we'll be back with part four where we eventually get the hyperdrive and begin to be able to defend our solar system, at least our solar system. So we'll be back in a minute. Zeddy Vegas here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in a bit. Bye.